Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sportsnet News. I'm Jeff Bork, and a pleasant special thanks to my subscribers. Please continue to subscribe if you enjoyed the content down below at the sub button now or at the end of the video on the easy-to-use widget. I did a video earlier on Travis Green and Jim Benning being let go by the Vancouver Canucks. This one's going to be about Bruce Boudreaux being acquired by the Vancouver Canucks. Of course, basically at the same time, they let the other two go. That was announced. But... Bruce Boudreaux is a guy that obviously pushes the offense and pays very well, plays a very good offensive game, makes all the right moves offensively, and in Canucksville, you want to see that offense continue to get going, but this is something that you're just bringing in a very good, which I think is a great decision by the Canucks, a very good, a very obviously reputation-built head coach that's been around for a while, that's had success, and his most previous success has been with the Minnesota Wild, where he went 158, 110, and 35 from 16 through 20. And then a lot of people thought was a kind of just out of the blue fired in February of 2020. It wasn't really an expected firing. But it's interesting, too, just an interesting tidbit. Mike Yo went back to head coaching because he's been pr um, promoted by the Flyers as an, on an interim basis to be the head coach as A.V., and Turian were let go, and I'm going to link the videos of A.V. and Turian being let go, and also Benning and Green being let go at the end of this, if you want to check those out as well, I would really appreciate it. But Boudreaux obviously took over essentially for Yo. John Trichetti was there for an interim basis, but Boudreaux, as the guy that's a tenured guy that has a reputation, he's the guy that essentially took over for Yo. They get jobs again at the same time, they're linked together again, and then obviously A.V., a weird connection too. The Canucks make a bunch of moves the same, and then the next day, A.V. is let go by the Philadelphia Flyers after they get spanked by the Lightning um, 7-1. to one. But Boudreaux, this is a good move. He's a very experienced head coach. He's a guy that obviously brings a great track record into the building. But this is, like I said in my video on Green and Benning being let go, it's not going to be a flip of the switch turnaround. You have a very good management group, even with the interim basis, um, as I stated earlier, um, reported by Ian McIntyre. You have Chris Gear. Ryan Johnson, Henrik and Daniel Sedin, and Dan Smile, where some people think the Sedins will end up being the next GMs. Who knows? We'll have to see. But with that group, you have a good group, but it's going to take a while if you keep a group consolidated together or you end up actually having people like a more regular structure, which one would think would happen. Then it's still going to take a while to get this to recover and come back because you got put into a very bad cap situation by Jim Benning the aforementioned former now general manager. So it's not something that you can kind of just flip a switch. It's something, though, that I would expect the Canucks to have some infused energy, potentially have a much better, they may be like more 500 level next 10 and start playing a little bit better hockey with uh, Bruce Boudreaux. But I don't expect them to just go from being where they were at to them being one of the be like basically doing what the Blues did. And going from that to like the, the unexpected happening and then going on a run to the Stanley Cup. I don't necessarily expect that happening. It would be great for Canucks land, obviously, if that does happen. But I don't see that necessarily happening because you got a roster that, uh, that just from listening and reading uh, threads that the Canucks fans are in and listening to different uh, spaces on Twitter, which are really cool, the Twitter spaces that uh, people have about the Vancouver Canucks and following a Reddit Facebook group and all that, it seems like people, basically with Green, um, wished him all the best and said he was such a good dude, good coach, it just it didn't, it was time to move on, but with Benning, obviously that's where everybody was mad and said he screwed up the team, he made the wrong moves, he put them in cap hell, well all that is actually true, so you gotta kinda push it, most of the blame to him, like I said in my past video, but that's gonna make it really hard for Bruce Boudreaux, cause he gave him a roster that's not the best constructed depth-wise and doesn't have the most guys coming up like the next Vasily Pekolzin who looks like a very talented potential top six guy or there. You don't have a lot of those guys coming up because Jim Benning traded them away or traded the draft picks away that would have got you those guys to be able to bring in guys to try to just basically stay competitive at the NHL level where with average for instance, I cover the AHL for Nitty Gritty, I watch the AHL around a little bit. They have some solid B, B plus, whatever you want to call them, C plus, B minus level prospects, but you need to have those guys that obviously come in and make the pounce because their farm system is not the strongest right now, and Jim Benning is the reason for that. 
So obviously Bruce Boudreaux is coming into a very tough situation in Vancouver where they got to get the cap situation under straps and they got to kind of just bring in a new mold into this team. And I think he is going to be able to do that. And that's why he's a great guy to bring in. But just because you're going to be able to bring in a new mold and not kind of get the team going in the right direction, that doesn't mean all of a sudden they're going to snap into being one of the cup contending teams and being this great thing. Because it seems like they kind of overreacted from that bubble run where Thatcher Demko was on a different level and went, we're ready now, it's our time, Eureka. And that just wasn't really the case. And it seemed like most analysts or even fans of the Canucks from following around necessarily didn't think that was the case and thought they jumped the gun a little bit, particularly with the OEL move because that really puts you in bad cap spots. Connor Garland, I thought, if you just brought him in, to a situation in Vancouver. He's still a young player that's still growing a good scorer, a good guy to mix in uh, with other players there. But if you brought in OEL also as one of the biggest contracts and a guy that has been underperforming recently, that didn't make a hell of a lot of sense. So it's been the recent moves in general in Vancouver that's going to make this really tough on Bruce Boudreaux to be able to come in and have a very big impact right away in terms of win total, but I think he will have a very big impact in terms of just being a new voice and moving the team in the right direction vibes-wise and kind of just getting everybody feeling better about themselves and maybe certain individuals that haven't been getting going for the Canucks this year to get going. So you obviously have trade bait and you have guys to move on from to bring in more of those assets because that's really what the Canucks are going to have to do unless if they do have a big unexpected run where Boudreaux comes in and they win like 18 of their next 20 or something ridiculous like that, and then go on an unexpected run, and then you're talking completely different here. They're going to have to start moving guys to bring in more assets because Benning screwed up and put them in a cap situation, but also put them in a situation where they he hasn't drafted all particularly that well or got rid of the picks in general and never drafted them. So obviously there's things that have to be adjusted there in Canucksville, but I wish them all the best, and I wish Bruce Boudreaux all the best, and hope he does start bringing more success to the Canucks, because they have been a team that's been a struggle to watch this year. They have so many talented guys, from Pedersen to Hughes to obviously Thatcher Demko in net, and they just made moves, like even the Holpe move, of course, they made moves that just haven't made sense over the recent years, and that's what got Benning axe, and it's ultimately what got Green axe, and... Uh, Now you bring in Bruce Boudreaux, hopefully this new management group that I complimented at the beginning deserves to keep getting complimented in the future, and whoever they decide to have as the GM most likely out of that group, then they can kind of take the fold and recover, but it's not going to be quick. I think Canucks fans are going to have to be patient because Benning just put them in a pretty deep hole at this juncture. Everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day, though. This has been a video on Bruce Boudreaux getting fired, or getting fired, getting hired uh, by the Canucks. Um, A move that people think took a little bit too long for him to get back into the coaching realm after being let go by the Minnesota Wild. But he now has a job again, and congratulations to him for getting hired by Vancouver, where he is going to implement his system and bring in new vibes. And I think it was the right decision to make. Just don't expect it to be something that all of a sudden makes the Canucks a great team like Jim Benning thought they were the Stanley Cup contender, it seemed, with the moves he was making like you were there. All you needed were a couple moves away to win the Stanley Cup, it seemed like was basically what he thought. But peace out, everybody. Stay safe. And if you enjoy the content, please continue to subscribe down below on the sub button. Or up above on the easy-to-use Professor Joe Widget. Enjoy the rest of the NHL season. And as always, enjoy the great hockey.